Hello again, and welcome to Reading Together, where we will uh, this time be reading through the book, The Mortification of Sin by John Owen. So in our last um, last reading together, we read through the book, Heaven Taken My Storm, at the end of last year by uh, the Puritan Thomas Watson. And this year, we're uh, in this, this installment, we're reading through another um, Puritan book together, uh, this time by the Puritan John Owen, and so the mortification of sin. This uh, little book that uh, that um, that when I when I first read through the Puritan paperback uh, version, the Puritan paperback abridged version of the book, uh, my immediate thought was, why did I not read this sooner? Um, and so this is a book that everyone, every Christian, uh, should read. I, I firmly believe that Jonathan uh, John Owen. Uh, not Jonathan. John Owen uh, was a was a great writer, as we'll discuss in just a second. Uh, so uh, the plan is to uh, be to, to to actually start our study through the book, our our reading through the book together in the first week of May. Um, and so uh, I'll put out a a um, a reading plan. Uh, it has 14 chapters in the book, and so we'll take 14 weeks to read through it. Uh, going just going chapter by chapter, um, and there will there will be plenty to discuss. And so, um, so as we did with uh, Heaven Taken by Storm, I'll have um, a little bit of a study guide put out with some questions to 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 ask as you go through it uh, yourself, or as you go through it with your family, or with a or with a small group, um, and that you can just uh, reflect on what we've been reading, and and I'll put out um, a recording of some of my thoughts. Um, uh, as 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 I've been going through, and and hope to hear back from you. And so, uh, so in this this introduction, I just want to uh, we've 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 already talked about when we uh, did the introduction to Heaven Taken by Storm. We've already talked a little bit about who the Puritans are, um, and so I'm not going to uh, rehash that. You can go back, and I'll put a link to that. You can go back and um, and and listen to that again. Instead, I just want to uh, just talk about two things. So or answer two questions. First, who was John Owen? And then what should you know about the mortification of sin going into it? Um, and, 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 and what are some details about this study? So first of all, who was John Owen? Uh, John Owen, he was a Puritan, as I said. He was born in the year 1616, uh, which as uh, Sinclair Ferguson notes, is this was the uh, year that William Shakespeare died. Um, so just to put you in, uh, put you with a little bit of a time frame of of when John Owen lived, he was born the year that Shakespeare died, and he died in the year 1683. So, uh, so he lived uh, right at about 200, uh, 400 years uh, previous to us, right? Um, and so, as I said, he was he was a Puritan. Um, he was uh, he is 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 known as an excellent thinker. Um, he's known as one of the one of the greatest. Uh, theologian thinkers um, of all time, not just of the Puritans. I think many people consider him to be um, the most, the most uh, intellectually powerhouse of, of, the, of all the Puritans, um, but it's not just for the Puritans. He's one of the most, uh, one of the most, um, um, most theologically uh, rigorous minds that just has ever lived of any theologian. Um, and so uh, John Owen, um, he uh, for the for kind of the first part of his ministry, um, he had uh, he enjoyed um, a lot of uh, a lot of publicity. Um, he was chaplain uh, to Oliver Cromwell, um, which, if you know anything about uh, the English Civil War, um, the uh, uh, the part where Parliament uh, dethroned the king and tried him as a tyrant and um, and executed him, and then for a little bit, um, uh, England uh, was. Uh, England was a was a republic with Oliver Cromwell um, ruling as not as king but instead as Lord Protector um, over 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 England um, and so John Owen uh, was was chaplain to Oliver Cromwell for that time and um, he preached regularly at Parliament um, and so uh, so he was so he 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 got he was a very well known um, speaker a very public uh, a very public uh, preacher um, but then. In the kind of second half of his ministry, <clears throat> once the great ejection happened, uh, which we kind of talked about with Thomas Watson, because uh, remember Thomas Watson lived in the, the same time period as John Owen, as 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 as, as many of the Puritans. Um, so when the when the great ejection happened, um, and uh, when 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 the when the new king um, was 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 seated back on the throne, um, and uh, he 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 made this this order uh, that all the people. That all the, the preachers who wouldn't follow the uh, the 
the book, the, the, the book of Common Prayer that was used in the Church of England, um, all those nonconformists um, that they had, that they were, they were ejected out of their pulpits. Um, and so John Owen was one of the nonconformists. Um, and so, and so he, uh, so, so for the second half of his, of his ministry, for the second half of his life, um, he was, uh, he, 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 he had, it got experienced a lot of hardships. Um, and so Sinclair Ferguson actually writes a little bit about some of those hardships that he experienced. So the great ejection, um, so that took place, that was called the, uh, the act of uniformity that took place in 1662. Um, where he got kicked out, and then um, in, in also in 1662, there was another act, an, another act that was uh, that made uh, nonconformist meetings illegal. Um, so not just kicked out of their pulpit, but made all but made all church gatherings of nonconformists illegal. And then there was another act in 1665 that prohibited nonconformist ministers from living within five miles of any place where they met, where they once ministered. Um, so I mean, so the so the government really started cracking down um, on the preachers who refused to conform uh, to the to the to the to the standards that they set um, to the to the way that they that they required worship to be done according to the to the book of common prayer and to, and some and some other things like that um, but during that time um, Owen John Owen John, John Owen continued to minister to people um, so like uh, so for instance uh, in the years 1665 and 1666 uh, Sinclair Ferguson says this so he's quote in 1665 England experienced the most severe outbreak of plague since the Black Death struck Europe in the 14th century in London, about 15% of the population died, including more than 7,000 in one faithful in one fateful week. The plague finally ended in 1666, which was also the year of the Great Fire of London. These events were thought by many to be a divine judgment for the treatment of the nonconformist. In any event, Owen joined many of his Puritan brethren in ministering to a needy city, right? And so... Uh, so just because he he spent the first half of his ministry um, ministering in, uh, in in a in a in a in a place of 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 great privilege, you know, getting to speak to the uh, to the to the to the highest people of the land, um, by the time by the, by the second half of his ministry, uh, John Owen certainly knew what tragedy was. He knew what it was to be uh, rejected for preaching the gospel and holding fast to God's word, and so when we when we read John Owen, and we shouldn't read this ivory tower. We shouldn't think that we're reading an ivory tower theologian, which um, the level of his intellect uh, makes it really easy uh, to 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 think that to think that we to think that John Owen is just you know this this academic that just is 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 towering above everyone else, you know, um, and that's not who John Owen was at all. Um, John Owen knew what it was to suffer for the cause of Christ. Um, and John Owen was just a rigorous thinker. Um, and in fact, um, another quote that I really like about who John Owen was and, and the way that he, that he thinks and what we'll definitely see here in the mortification of sin is, uh, um, comes from J.I. Packer, in the introduction, in, in an introduction that he wrote to the mortification of sin, and um, and this is actually the the version of the book that that that, that we will be going through. Um, it's put out by Christian Heritage uh, Books, um, and so and it is the it is the full the full version of the mortification of sin. It's not the abridgment um, that, uh, that that the Puritan paperback version of mortification of sin is. Though, if you do have the 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 Puritan paperback version of Mortification of Sin. Um, feel free to, to to be reading that along with us. It is it goes it, it has the same. Uh, it's broken down by the same chapters and all that kind of stuff. It's just a it's just an abridgment and modern and modernized uh, version of John Owen, just made a little bit easier to read. And in fact, the probably the best way to go through um, to go through this with us uh, um, will be if you have if you have both of those copies. Um, so we'll be so we'll be we'll be following the original. Um, Owen's full version, um, but if you do have both copies, um, it would probably be really helpful to read the original first and to try to understand what Owen is uh, saying, and then you can go to the Puritan paperback version second, um, and you can kind of read Richard Rushing. He's the one that did the abridgment, and you can read his abridgment of it and and uh, and kind of uh, 
see see how much of it that you uh, that you you were able to grasp um, from Owen before you before you listen into uh, into into my thoughts um, that that we that we'll be discussing that we'll be discussing together, right? So uh, so J.I. Packer he has this to say about John Owen and his in his writing. He says he wrote for readers who once they take up a subject cannot rest until they see the bottom of it and who find exhaustiveness of coverage and presentation of the same truths from many different angles not exhausting but refreshing his books have been truly described as a series of theological systems each organized round a different center the truth of the trinity the story of the triune creator becoming the triune redeemer has always was always his final point of reference and the living of the Christian life was his constant concern. End quote. So that is that is who John Owen was, right? So he is a rigorous thinker, and that is exactly what we will see in the mortification of sin, right? So what do we need to know about the mortification of sin? It was originally a sermon series that he preached in uh, 1656, so that is before the Great Ejection, right? Um, and he preached it to, uh, to 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 mainly to mainly college students, to young men, which is uh, which 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 is a, a good audience uh, to receive the mortification of sin, uh, to receive this 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 message, right? Though this is uh, for everyone we can we can certainly see that it is uh that it that is very applicable for young men um trying to control the passions of the flesh right um and so he so he he originally preached it and then um and it was well received and so he and so he edited it down into uh into the contents of a book um and, and published it out and so and that's and, and exactly what we'll see in the mortification of sin is that he is um is that john john owen is um um really breaking through and and uh and he takes he takes one single one single verse in romans chapter 8 as as we'll see um when we when we go through our first when we discuss the first chapter um and he bases the entire book around that single verse and explaining what mortification what the mortification of sin is what the mortification of sin is not um and how we are to mortify our sins right and now, as we go through um, this book, uh, so mortification of sin, I think is 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 probably the the best introduction to John Owen. I think it's the I think it's the the, the best the best jumping on point into getting into his works. Um, but J.I. Packer says uh, just a, late, a little bit later in that introduction, um, he 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 tells us um, that it is a little bit hard for new readers um, to get on Owen's wavelength. Is what he says. And uh, one of the reasons for that is because uh, Owen. Uh, some some people have said that Owen's uh, essentially Owen's first language was Latin rather than English, um, which is you know which is odd because Latin ceased to be a living language um, a, a little more than a thousand years before John Owen uh, was even born. Um, and yet, but 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 Latin was still the academic language of the day. Um, and so uh, Owen was raised uh, was raised knowing Latin. He 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 studied Latin, um, and uh, and so and so he was so he had a very Latinized uh, way of 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 writing and, and preaching. Um, and so uh, so it can it can be a little hard. It's a little bit so the the just the language that he uses and the style of his of his writing um, can be a little bit difficult. Um, to get into at first, um, but I think that by the time we get finished with the book, um, I think that we'll have developed kind of a Owen's rhythm of writing. Right, we'll kind of get our ear tuned to who he is. But uh, but, pa- but Packer notes in his introduction, and and if you are going through this copy that does have the introduction by Packer, I would encourage you to um, to not skip it. Um, but he says that it's not just the Latinized English um, that Owen does uh, that, that that Owen writes in that makes him hard to tune into. He says uh, that we can also find it difficult uh, to really understand Owen and to, and to, to get onto his wavelength, as he said, because we can suffer from, this is quote, suffer from the shortcomings of much present day Christian nurture. And he mentions four areas in particular. He says that we have an insufficient view of the, an insufficient emphasis on the holiness of God. Second, uh, that we that we don't have a we don't have a significant motivating desire um, for for scripture and for love of God. Third, uh, that we we insufficiently emphasize the need for self scrutiny. Right, and oh man, that's a 
that's a big one <laughs> in the age of in the age of self-esteem, right? Uh, no one wants to talk about the importance of self-scrutiny, um, but it, which is exactly what we need to be doing as believers. We need there, there needs to be a healthy amount of of making sure that we are walking in the faith. And then fourth, he says the, uh, there's an insufficient emphasis of the life-changing power of God. Um, and so if we if we um, have those. Um, if we if we if we do sufficiently emphasize those four things, we'll find ourselves much more on the on the same wavelength as as Owen because uh, those were his his beating heart. Um, he did have an emphasis on the holiness of God, that God is other, that God is different, on uh, the on on the significance of 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 desiring God, desiring His Word, desi- uh, um, wanting to love Him more, wanting purity in Him, uh, the need for our self scrutiny, not uh, not so that we can just you know, um, knock ourselves down and um, self-deprecate, but instead so that we can see where we are sinful, to see where we need to repent and to, and to cling to him uh, for repentance. And then, uh, and then fourth, you know, the, the life changing power of God that only at the end of the day, only there is no, there is no way that we ourselves can fully mortify, mortify, uh, mortify our sins. We need the power of God working in us, the, 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 the goodness of the Father's love, working through Christ the mediator, empow, uh, um, empowered and empowered by the Holy Spirit to kill our sin and to conform us more into more and more into the image of his son, right? And so those are things to keep in those are things to keep in mind as we are getting ready to read this series, uh, as we're getting ready, ready to read this book. Um, and one last thing that I'd like to point out. Um, is that in his uh, um, in his little study guide, um, little little booklet to the mortification of sin, Rob Edwards he tells us that we need to keep two things in mind um, as we are reading the mortification of sin. And he says, first, this short book is focused on the doctrine of sanctification to be distinguished from the doctrine of justification. Right. So justification is that we are saved once for all in Christ. Done. Deal. Right. Mort- uh, justification is symbolized by baptism. Right, you get baptized once, to, as as this as the sign that our sins have been washed away. Um, but sanctification is symbolized in in our in in our taking of the Lord's Supper, which we do repeatedly. Right, Christ is is constantly sanctifying us. He justifies us once, once for all, but he continuously sanctifies us. And so, um, uh, and this was this was the point that I made repeatedly throughout Heaven Taken by Storm as well. Thomas Watson was not writing about justification; he was writing about sanctification. Right, and so if we look at the mortification of sin um, uh, as a book about justification, um, then we're going to view this book as a as a book of works. Um, and we're going to think that, that, that Owen is, per, is promoting morality. Um, but, 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 but justification is not in view here. Um, John Owen did write about um, justification. Um, and indeed, I think he wrote a, he wrote a treatise called the, the Doctrine of Justification by Faith, right? Um, or, his, or his more famous one, uh, The Death of Death and the Death of Christ. Um, and so, uh, and so, we, so if you want to hear what, what he had to say about justification, you can go to those works. Um, and hear and hear what he's saying, but no, he's writing about sanctification here, and so and so. Let's not uh, accuse him of 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 denying things that that he's not treating in this book, right? So he's treating with sanctification again. And the second thing that that Edwards asks us to uh, keep in mind is he said um, that this short work has as its focus the negative side of sanctification, namely mortification. The positive side being vivification, becoming more alive in Christ. And Packer makes the same, uh, makes, makes, makes this similar point um, as well. Uh, and so this is focusing on the negative end, but there is also the positive end, that, that, that we're not just killing the sin in us, we're becoming more alive to Christ, right? Um, so, 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 so even as, even as Owen is speaking of the negative, um, even though he's focusing on the negative, um, let us also keep in mind um, that, that, that there is the positive end of, 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 of the mortification of sin, that there is becoming more alive to Christ. Um, and so I'll leave us with this last note. Um, so Edwards, at the, end of his, at the end of his little introduction, he has this to say. He says, John Owen does not intend to say all that there is to say about the gospel in this short treatise on mortification. Its focus is on sanctification and in particular on that aspect of sanctification that deals with the remaining presence of sin within us. So as you work your way through this book, remember that Christ is your righteousness. 
take to heart these two vital truths, that his death is at work within you as you struggle against sin, and that his resurrection is bringing new life to you so that you may live to God. End quote. <laughs> so I pray that you would indeed keep those two things in mind as we go through this book, um, that, uh, that the Owen's exhaustive treating treat, treatise here um, on the mortification of sin is, uh, is, 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 I don't think that there is a better one, not that I've found. Um, and so, and so um, I am, I'm super excited to, be, uh, to get to dive into this book with you, to get to read through it um, again and pull out certainly more uh, than, I, than I've pulled out before. Um, and so I pray that the Lord be gracious to us as we dive into this study. And like I said, um, so make sure that you, if you haven't gotten your copy, make sure that you, uh, that you do get your, you do your, you do get your copy um, because, and we will be beginning, um, we'll be beginning the series um, with studying chapter, with uh, discussing chapter one, the first week of May. And so look for, so look for my next recording over uh, the mortification of sin, um, the, the, the first Wednesday of May. And so happy reading, grace, and peace.